Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of On The Couch. I'm John Vogel, I'm your host, joined by my co-host Ian Nash, of course. Hey John, how are you going? Yeah, good. And you? And hey, once again, you. two more gentlemen that we're now very familiar with, James Leonard and Will Clayfield. How are you, gentlemen? Good, thank you. Good, well. Doing all right? Yeah. Another exciting episode. We've got another one of your bases. It's another it's one. Because we're... One just of many. one of many. We just couldn't get enough. Now I'm a bit excited about this one because I know you're a big Gene Simmons Kiss fan. This I'm a big Gene Simmons Kiss fan. The bass we're going to look at today is his one of his two signature basses, the uh, Gene Simmons Punisher bass. The Punisher bass. It is indeed. It's the um, it's the one that Court brought out. That yep. was, uh, I guess you'd say, <laughs> mass produced in sort of. Yeah, in hopes for a short period yeah, at least. For a short yeah. period at least, yeah. They're, they're not. There was another one that came out that was a neck through that was a high end um, model. Uh, I think at the time you could only get through Spencer's Gifts, and they were very, very hard to get. They were all actually hand signed and, and physically numbered on the back of the headstock. Yep. These ones came in a little bit more affordable price. Very sought after now. Very hard to get. Well, I think the, the, the story I, I'm led to believe is they were out for a little while and for some reason, and I, I don't know why, they, I think Gene Simmons pulled the agreement. And mm -hmm. I'm led to believe, and I think you told me this, that whatever remaining stock was out there at the time, he bought up to take off the market. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how true that is, but I've got no reason. Well, we, we, we've heard that on a few sources. A few different yeah. sources. His, his merchandising company, which he owns, just pulled him. Pulls the pen. Yeah, and yeah. that's... That's created the shortage, which has popped the prices up. Price yeah. And, and so I was just going to say that um, I'll drop a name. I'm actually friends with Gene Bass Tech Michael. And the bases that you can have, not stage play, but signed on the cruises, yeah. are courts. I, oh, so they're made by court. The ones he sells by, on it, because yeah, he, 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 he now court. sells them off through his own website. Yeah, yeah. the only and difference then, in the physical appearance is the court logo is not on the headstock. His image is his, his, yeah, his, his logo, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, you know, looking back through time, Gene Simmons has a history of chopping and changing yeah. uh, his guitar makers. I mean, yeah, you look at his other signature bass, and the one that we're probably all more familiar with is the Axe bass. Mm -hmm. I think the now you may correct me if I'm wrong. I think the very initial Axe bass was either a Jackson or a BC Rich. I can't remember which one, but then I think he went from one to the other. There was uh, a period where there was a prototype made by an Italian luthier, and it was actually the one that was used in the Always Made for Loving You film clip. Right. And Sean knows something. It had a spade headstock. Yeah. When he finally came to the design that he liked, because it went through a few different, it morphed into a couple of different sort of things before it came out. That came out as a Kramer. It had an alloy in there, got a split head stock. Yep. Yeah. And then after he had the Kramer for quite a few years, um, he went to Jackson with it. Right. Jackson brought out an axe, but not, not, I don't think it actually came out on the market, but Jackson were making axes yep. for Gene. That fell through, or he obviously walked away from the deal. Um, and then his Punisher came on the market for a while. Which was through BC Rich when they first came out. Yep. Obviously, he pulled the deal with BC Rich and set it up so that they were made by his own company, and that's where the axe came back in to being, and they're made by his own company as well. Yep. So I'm still yet to find out who that company is. Because hmm. some people think it's Court, some think it's Fernandez. Could be. Well, when, when Court bought the Punisher base out, and I'm going back around 2009, 10 ish. Mm. You could also buy an axe. That's right. Yes, so they, they bought out the two. Mm -hmm. But I think the history behind the, the Punisher, uh, if I'm correct, is obviously he was well known for the axe, but practically as a, as a base to play on stage, it's not the most practical base. That's true. It looks good. Uh, and Gene, right through the 70s, you know, probably before the axe, back when he was playing Gibson Grabbers, Rippers, he had the Spectres, mm -hmm. uh, the the Lebeau. Yep, yep. Uh, is that his mid, mid 70s Lebeau, yeah. yeah. He, he always liked a guitar that, he always played long scale guitars, but he used to say that he always wanted a guitar that was had a good cutaway so he could get to the real high notes. Yeah. And 
through all his fiddling and customizing and modifying that he did with his basses, he was never really happy. So he sat down from scratch mm. and and drew up a bass that he thought or he felt was the perfect bass for him with exactly what he wanted. And that was the Punisher yeah. bass. Uh, yeah. So that's how it's come about. He went with symmetry. Um, the main difference between the Punishers that were available to the general public and the ones that are stage played, uh, Gene's a neck through to start with, and the only thing on Gene's stage played basses are that it only has a volume pot, there's no tone control, there's no toggle switch, and the input jack's on the front of the body. It's not on the edge. Yeah, I know that that is a particular Gene Simmons thing, mm. and I've read that. All his stage guitars have the jack on the front, yeah. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably something to do with the fact that he wears that much it, in his costume, yeah. and you know you don't want to be knocking jacks and you know, yeah, creating. When it comes to that, he's meat and potatoes. He just like volume on, volume off. Yeah. Play the jack's not going to be impeded by, or the or the uh, wireless cord's not going to be yeah. impeded by his costume at any point. So, but that that's the kind of player that Gene Simmons is mm. too. It's it's all on or it's all off. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's full true. blast or it's not at all. Uh, and and that's a bit of uh, I think his his mentality and his psych you know psyche with with playing bass. He uh, he doesn't get into all the intricacies of mm. fancy stuff. He's just into it, full ball, and and then that's it. So mm. uh, now the interesting thing is with court, you know they were only out for a short while. We've mentioned that we believe he's pulled all of them back. Now, it's funny, only this year, and I am digressing from this particular base, but uh, earlier this year, was it late last year, he's now released another signature model back with Gibson. Back with Gibson. Uh, the G Squared, which is a Thunderbird in two colours. I think it's black and silver or red and silver. Mm. Then there was talk he was going to bring out a signature Flying V base, yeah and possibly a twin neck bass. Now the funny thing is, again, those Thunderbird basses hit the market hard and fast and they weren't cheap, they are about five grand US each. Mm. Uh, and I've seen a few YouTube clips where guys have got hold of them and done reviews on them. And then no sooner have they come out for a month or two cool. and they've gone they're quiet, gone. gone. Yeah. And the, the talk of the V coming out and this double neck bass is, things have gone quiet and again, through a few different sources, we've heard that he's possibly bought up all the remaining Thunderbird mm. stock. So whether again he's there's been some sort of falling out or something with Gibson, I don't know. Well, I don't think it's necessarily falling out with Gibson. Gene's got a, a history of buying up merchandise of of anything, whether it's a twelve inch doll through to a guitar and everything in between. That's it's Gene. an amazing business strategy, it really, really yeah, it is. I mean, and that's that's been Gene's history throughout the early days of Kiss when the merchandise became a big thing. Mm. He saw it as a big thing. And if you've seen, seen him on um, <clears throat> those TV shows, when they've gone through his um, through his house, house. Oh, yeah, family, family and jewels, yeah, Gene Simmons. Like, he's got yeah. just. Yeah, he's got everything. Yeah. Thousands of licenses in merchandise. Yeah, yeah I think I think crazy. there's over three thousand yeah. licenses for Kiss merchandise. Yeah. And that was just what we saw. That's what yeah. he's got. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff away in warehouses all over the states. I've, yeah. I've got a friend in the states that actually has one of the black G squared Thunderbirds with the chrome, and he said it's one of the best bases he ever played. Wow. And oh wow, okay. Yeah, but he's that's it. He can't get them anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's very sad. And that's kind of what's happened with the courts mm. as well, you know, with the Punishers and the Axes. So, uh, well, I had two Punishers back in 2011 that um, I bought from a local guitar shop. Yep. And I loved them. And, of course, you go through times where you go, oh, I need some money. I have to yep. sell a guitar. Yeah, life, life gets in the life way. Life gets in the way. Yep. So I parted with one and then later on I parted with the other. And um, I thought... I need a Punisher for the collection at home yeah. and something that I actually really enjoyed to play. Yeah. So I started to look around and, and they've been very, very hard to source yeah. for, for, I don't know, years. So I uh, turned to this again, gentleman again. You go to your local I guitar go broker. Local broker and I say, I'm know. seeing a theme here through all these last episodes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time you come around here, you go and home with a with a new bass. Well, that's, well, sure. Or at least one you've ordered. Well, that's right. No, I was just kidding. It's for your wife. Oh, that's all right. There's another one on the way. 
there's not. Um, so yeah, I, I spoke to him and um, and lo and behold, and lo and behold, he, he pulled he, one out of wherever he pulls them out of from his contacts. I think this one's from Japan too. This spaceship, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, from Japan and um, <laughs> and it was another, it was another fast one, like. Yeah, I could have moved as like a day. Yeah, I told you about it. Yeah, yeah, I remember you were talking to me about it. And I was just like insane. I was just, how do you fuck? Because I've been looking for years. I, I want one. Yeah, it's... I, I said to you earlier off camera. I, I'd love the the, the axe and Punisher so that's a pair. just as a yeah. pair hanging on the wall. And, but man, you look at the prices. Like even yeah, you know, if 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 you can't find them on eBay in the states, mm. they're just it's pulling stupid. One, one of the great things about Cork guitars is uh, they're a Korean, South Korean company. Yeah, they switched their production in the um, early two thousands to Indonesia. Mm. Between them, Court and Fender, or, and Squire, um, they were the first companies to start building guitars in Indonesia. Yeah, I tell you what, the quality control coming out of Indonesia is really good. Pretty it's good. Really damn good. Pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I think they, those companies stack their. Um, QA guys from Korea and um, the acoustics of that have come out of Indonesia have been absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Fender don't make anything out of Korea anymore; they switch to the same factory. To the same Korea. factory, and uh, yeah, because those Fenders and Squires that were coming out of Korea were really top notch. They were probably equal to the, the Japanese stuff. Yeah. But when they switched to um, Indonesia, they got a little bit of um, backlash initially. But I tell you what, the stuff's pretty damn good now. Mm. Well, yeah, I don't know. Coming in today and just eyeballing it while we've been here, that I mean, that looks like a really good quality guitar. It it's, is a really good quality guitar. Yeah, the the, the you know, machinery on it and, and yeah, it just looks sensational. Now, obviously, you play with Black Whiskey, hence mm -hmm. the Black Whiskey shirt. You've played this on stage, I know that because I've have. seen pictures on Facebook. Mm -hmm. What's it like to play on it's stage? It's one of my favourite. It's actually this is actually now my go-to live band. Wow! Oh really? Yes. Yeah. 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 This this one will be coming sure. out in the next couple of shows. The only thing I won't do with it when it comes to the end of the year on tour is I won't put it on a plane. Okay. I'll take something that's a lot easier to replace and a lot cheaper to replace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just in case. Yeah. 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 I'll do local shows with it because the tone is just incredible. Wow! It's got such a if you want to have a real bottom end growl, it's got it, but you can wind it back and it's just got mm. that nice, just the right top end scoop mids and the bottom end's just the right balance. Yep. Um, and if you want the gene tone, you can get it straight out of that base. Because I was quite fortunate. I mean, that came up at the right, you were after the right place at the right time. Mm. I was able to get you at the time. Replacing that now would be next to impossible. Yeah. yeah. And if you could, you'd pay well, it's going to be a lot more than what yeah, you know, pay for it. Yeah, um, you know, I'd, I'd say probably a good 20 25 percent more. Yeah, and wow. particularly if you've got to buy it from overseas with the Australian dollar, yeah, being the import and that'd be it's, it's 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 crazy. Yeah, so uh, no, that was that was a, a very mm. right place, right time, right place, right time. It came up, and the nice thing about it is. It's another one that Ian's got me that looks like it's virtually just come straight off the off the shelf. Yeah, not yeah. A mark on I'm it. kind of thinking that it, 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 whoever owned it before you probably played it once or twice. And, 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 yeah, it looks, and, and yeah. yeah, it looks like. And it, the the best part of the story is when we when I got it, it didn't come with a case. Mm. I was flicking through um, cash converters, and there was a punchy case of cash, cash converters. At, the Gold Coast. So okay. I was able to, I was able to get the case for it for mm. next to nothing. Wow. And we got that sent up from the Gold Coast. So the case and, and the, the base. base from two two different sources became an actual set. Mm. Oh, it all came together. It came together at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So that you mean because the, the case was in pretty good nick, wasn't it? The case is in good nick actually, and the, the case alone it's as rare as the base and when you can when you find a lot of people actually split because i actually keep this in a flight case um they'll sell the original case off and they'll get big money for yeah yeah because the whole thing's got jeans yeah, yeah, yeah i was yeah. going to say because when they came out they came with the hard case yeah with that uh what do you call that material that's the phonics yeah sort of material and yeah but it had gene simmons as yeah. Big melon right on the front yeah, of the whole case. Yeah, it's noggin. Well, that, and that's the same thing with the X. 
Yeah. If you can get the uh, the court tax, yep. same deal. Um, yeah, we're still coming for that. <laughs> yeah, the holy grail. We'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. Yeah, one will pop up. Yeah. Just so there. yeah, that, that's your go, your go to. It base. is so my go to. You would play play pretty well your whole gig on that base. Yes. Yeah. So far since I got it, <clears throat> excuse me, I've only we only had the one show and I played the whole show with it and actually when we finished the show and we were packing up, the sound guy came up to me and said your rig and that bass just sounded awesome and I and I was only using my little club rig, it was only 140 watt half your head and a 15 cab. Yep. But um the sound that it gets out of it is just unbelievable. Awesome. Oh, I love it. Awesome. Yeah. So when you play, do you generally just play the one bass or do you have, you know, two or three backup basses for certain songs, certain tunings? Uh, normally because most if not all of them or most of the black whiskey stuff is uh, down tuned to D. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, drop D. Yeah, to drop D, I will take normally to a show two bases, both of them are tuned in D. Uh, we've got a couple of new songs that are out that are in standard E440, but I just, I'll just still play them, try to transpose them to the bass that I've got. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just play along. Um, yeah. Dan will play it in E, just play two and I'll songs. just play and it. And you'll just yeah. play it in whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. Mainly the second bass is a backup in case something goes wrong, whether the Right, always have a spare. Or, yeah, yeah. So I'll have a have a spare. I take two on the planes and we go on tour to Sydney or Melbourne and yeah, and that. But um, the other thing I'll say about the court bass, which is something that I like, is it's passive. Right, Gene stage basses are active. They've got EMGs in them. Okay. So this is got everything that I love. It's got this one of Gene's basses. It's it's passive and it's got the great sound. And I don't have to worry about batteries or over or sort of really overdriving my signal. So that's that's one thing I really do like is it's a passive bass. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. So if you if it comes passive, why would Gene Simmons run active in his basses? Gene's signal not only is it an active bass, he's a, he really drives. I mean, when he used Ampeg heads, those heads were glowing by the end of the show. And by the end of the show, because he drives the signal so hard, the signal degree, you, you can tell from the start of the show to the end of the show, the signal's it's degraded true. because the amp head's running hot. Oh, yeah. Gene runs his stuff now through all solid state and through a sans amp uh, preamp, basically goes to his ear. Mm -hmm. uh, he uses a uh, an Empress compressor pedal for a yep. bit more sustain. Yep. And he also uses uh, Shure Wireless Systems as well. He's... He's an aggressive bass player, and when you listen to his signal, isolated or alone, it's it's very gritty, mm -hmm. you know. So he, he really does drive his signal hard, and you will get that from an active bass. Yeah. Um, I prefer the passive side of it, but I will be running um, a compressor pedal for it to get a bit more sustain. Yeah. And I've also found another Ampeg pedal that I'll be happy with in the chain of my signal too next week when I start practicing. Start. With it. Start playing. Start playing it again. Lovely. Ripping it out for a, a big show next month. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds good. So you're going to be using it for the fucking play? Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> you've got to get some more photos with it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, I just love the tone. It's just a, an awesome tone. It's the tone I like. Um, the I-85 Ibanez is similar, but this is a little bit more, I want, I want to say it's a little bit more toppy, but it's a little bit more balanced from bottom to top. Um, the Ibanez has that sort of the classic, the scoop mids sound with, with no signal adjustment whatsoever. This is just raw, very sort of piano-y tone, which I like. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll just tweak the signal accordingly. And I don't have to mess around with active, passive wireless where you've got to adjust your, yeah, yeah. your signal out and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So, well, this is your latest mm -hmm. one that you've been fortunate to come through for me and get... And we know that about you wanting to get the um, the court X. What else would you would that I'd like to do? add? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Obviously, the, you know, the, like yourself, the X would be a, a perfect cap, you know, look yeah. into this one. Um, the Destroyer Two that I used to play oh, in yeah, the eighties. Yeah. I've been hunting that 
trying to I'm very the, very hard to find going, yeah. the, the last one i actually saw wasn't this it was the next model which was an 84 yeah which had the micro toggle and the, and the double yeah. humbuckers in it and that was a phenomenal amount back then and then you were looking at what an epiphone corona yeah an epiphone yeah. explorer explorer yeah epiphone explorer i like the explorer shape i think it's probably because it's the first shape ish because the destroyer was very similar yeah um that i used to play a lot you know, back in the old days, it was every show was that, and I used to have one that you would have loved. I had a nineteen eighty three, or eighty four. It was a nineteen eighty four vintage X seventy seven Avenger base. Yep. Um, that was my backup. So I had the dest I had the destroyer and the vintage, and couldn't go wrong. Those vintage Two cases Japanese. are pretty damn good. They're pretty well, hard to find them. too. Sorry, you got a vintage boat. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah through you yeah, through the brokerage. Big, uh, VS six hundred B, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, big. The X seventy seven that I had looked a lot like an eagle, VCH yeah. eagle. It had the downturn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in red. It was a nice base. But oh, nice. This just brings back so many sound memories, if that makes sense, of what yeah. I used to hear when I was playing years ago. So I'm very happy with it. Cool. So if anyone out there wants to get a guitar, that's the man to see. If you can't find it. Get in touch with Nash Jingles Brokerage because, you know, it's very good. He can find it. Well, how about we uh, we plug the old girl up? Here we go. And, uh, yeah. Oh, I've got to plug it in. <sighs> Such a mean looking bass. It is. And the other thing I like about playing this bass is it's not heavy. No, it's a light. I, um, it's a light. I, I know that I got it in and I was... Uh, Give it one side Yeah, it's thinking about possibly changing the pickups to passive EMGs but when I heard the Mighty Mites no nah, I'm not going to touch it this is just this is what it is is perfect so I'm not going to touch the pickups on it at all uh, it's got that exact sound that I like <laughs> Simmons is long lost younger brother Sebastian Simmons. I just made that up. I don't know where it came Seb. from. <laughs> Seb. Seb. <laughs> sure. Mate, thank you for that. Not a problem. It's great to go through another one of your bases. Uh, I'm a little more annoyed that I don't have one of these now, so I have to have a chat to the man. Yeah. Chat to the man. That's yeah, all right. Yeah, we get him to find another one. Make sure it's not, not just one. a one off fluke. And uh, maybe a couple of axes while we're at it. So, Sounds good. Sounds good to awesome. me. Awesome. Again, to all our viewers, thank you for joining in. Thank you to James, Ian, Will. Thanks for having me. Yeah, mate, thank you for being had. It's great. And before we go, this is our last episode for this season. Um, but don't be concerned because the executive producers have told us that next year, 2023, we've got another 26 episodes on, 26 on the count. 26 episodes. So, uh, and the, we're going to be uh, a few little different things. We're going to yeah. be going out and about and we're going to do some uh, interviews at on location yep uh, as well as we 
having some more great guitars and basses and some local artists, I believe. But, uh, and world famous music. Yeah, I was going to say some international artists. Yes, we've got, we've got a few lined up, so it's a uh, pretty cool, uh, cool season. And we've, perhaps we've got a few younger younger kids, younger yes. guys coming through Absolutely. talking about getting into guitars and yeah, you know so the benefits of lessons and the guitars that they've bought. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure between both of us and with James, we've got some more of our own collections. <laughs> yeah, more through. of our own, yeah. So, uh, our ever-growing uh, collections. <laughs> Thank yeah. you to our ever-understanding wise. So, John, Amen. thanks thanks for the great season. It's, it's been, been a great amazing. year. 26 next year. 26, 26 right. episodes. Yeah. Are we getting a pay rise double. with all this? No. Yeah, double. Yeah. Double. Oh, double. Yeah. Oh, all right. So that's two Hang on, we don't get anything. Double yeah. Nothing. We don't get anything. <laughs> double, double, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. double and nothing. Yeah. So, from us for 2023, thanks for being a part of our family on the couch, uh, our Facebook family as well, our extended family at Base Up Front. It's been a great year. We will be back next year, as Ian said. So until then, look after yourself. Have a great Christmas. Have a great New Year. And uh, hang in there. Go back and catch up on some of those episodes that you've missed. Or just go back and catch up on them. So till next year, take care. Cheers. See ya.